Hi everyone, I'm Ali Graymond. Today I wanted to talk to you about a question I get asked often and the question is, Ali, I'm doing recovery work but the thoughts are still coming in. What does that mean? And what it means is over some period of time, say a month, a year, a decade, you've been conditioning your brain that these thoughts are valid based on your reaction. So when you react to a thought with fear, when you do compulsions, whether mental or physical, it's kind of like you're saying to your brain, yes, this is valid. Please send me more. I need to be protected. Please tell me uh, all the, uh, the this, this story or similar stories and all of their detail, uh, all of their detail, you know? So because of that, this thought comes in more and more. And now abruptly you're saying, Never mind, I'm not reacting. But the brain is used to this old programming. And for safety reasons, it's programmed, in, not by you, but I mean generally by, by nature, it's programmed in such a way that it can't just stop the thought. If, it's, if it was giving you something and you were reacting with fear, that means this is important. So just like a, a, you know, a train that's going full force, it's going to take a while for it to stop even after you press the brakes. So don't take the fact that you're still getting thoughts to mean something negative about your recovery. What I want you to do is focus entirely on what you are doing each day. That is honestly all that matters. If you did the best you possibly could in refusing reaction, then you've done good and you should be proud of the work you have done. And, you, and again, I go into self-esteem a lot on this channel and my other channel because it's really important to build up self-esteem. Because when you have OCD, you tend to lose um, self-esteem as you go. It goes lower and lower. So don't beat yourself up for not being perfect. You did the best you could because in the course of a the day, there's, there's a lot of variables. There's stress, there's being busy, there's triggers you didn't expect. Um, all kinds of things that create more problematic situation that make it harder to react. So if you can say, I've done the best possible, I've done the best I possibly could under the circumstances that happened today, then that's all you can possibly do. And then when does the train stop after you pre pressed stop? You know, this is just physicality of the brain. The, the, we have nothing to do with any of it. This is completely mechanical. Don't even get yourself involved. It's sending you thoughts. Let it send you thoughts. It's irrelevant. The only thing that's relevant is your actions. And if your actions are to the best of your ability, then you will recover. And eventually it will stop because you're not feeding it. You're not pushing gas anymore on, on these thoughts. You know, because the danger is if you are um, always kind of looking over your shoulder to see how you're feeling, how many thoughts are coming in and all of this kind of stuff, which happens a lot. You know, the person starts because people with OCD, they they tend to get obsessive about a lot of different things. You know, it's kind of person. It's uh, it's it's def it's obviously a disorder, but it's also there is a personality trait there as well that they're they're very kind of um intricate a lot of the times about the things that they care about so if you start to really get into well how am i doing you know the analytics but really too in depth then it starts to um it, it can start to become an obsession all in itself well i got a thought today well what does this mean but i didn't get the thought this many days you know and you start to do these calculations and all of this and you can get really in depth into it and and like i said make it a new obsession so you have to watch it that it doesn't matter, the brain will stop by itself if I stop feeding this thought. And I am doing my best to stop feeding the thought in all kinds of ways, physical compulsions, mental compulsions. If you feel you're not sure how you're feeding it, because it's another question I get asked a lot, I'll do a separate video on it maybe next few days, but, um, but if you're not sure how you're feeding the thought, I will tell you, it's the analyzing. Whenever a person asks me in sessions, how am I feeding this? I don't feel like I'm doing a lot of compulsions. I mean, nine times out of 10, it will be that the person is uh, um, 
okay, maybe eight times out of 10, the person is analyzing. The other two is usually avoidance. So they're not doing active compulsions, but if we kind of look deep in, um, it, it's the avoidance because technically they feel like they're not doing compulsions, but they're also avoiding a lot too, not that they don't have to do compulsions. You know, so I see that a lot as well. So those are kind of the two, two pitfalls that you don't want to fall into. Um, but yes, it's just every day, did I do the best I can? And that doesn't mean that you did perfect. Because again, another aspect of OCD is perfectionism. That you don't want to get too much into perfectionism where, again, you're beating yourself up for this and causing... Because anytime you have any negative emotion about your recovery... You're sending that message to the brain. So every time you're thinking, oh, I didn't do good. Oh, I will never recover. Oh, this person said this and this person said that. Oh, I didn't, you know, I could have done better. All of these negative things are still going back to the brain that this original situation is connected to negativity. In this particular instance, it might not be connected to fear directly, except for the fear of what if I will never recover. Uh, but it's not connected to the same kind of fear directly, but it's still, you're still not saying to your brain, everything is okay. It's under control. I'm doing the best I can. Not doing this anymore. You're not sending that signal. You're sending a negative signal. And you need to really watch how, where you are doing that and, uh, eliminate it as much as possible. It is self work and it's, it's very tedious because it's, you know, for people who are at 10 out of 10 OCD, it's moment, moment to moment doing this recovery work. It is, um, it is tedious. It is bothersome. But what can you do? You need to do recovery work in order to recover. With OCD, it's, people can say whatever they want, but until you start to actively do ERP, no amount of talk therapy will help you out of this. No amount of medication will make this go away. It just won't. Because you're keeping the thought on life support. You're saying to your brain, this is important. This is valid. You know, let's continue to think about it. And the brain's like, okay, I can send you these thoughts all day long. I'll give you this detail. I'll give you that detail. What about this? Oh, you didn't think of this? I'll send you this. And, you know, because the brain is creative. And people with OCD tend to be very intelligent, very smart. So the brain can come up with just about anything. You know, any combination that will send you into a new panic over and over again. So it's just kind of staying above that and looking at it again, like I say in my other videos that, you know, pasta is pasta under red sauce, under white sauce. It doesn't matter. It can send you any detail. It's the same theme, disregarding. And when you're disregarding, yes, the thought is not going to go away. It will still nag at you, but your job is continuously disregarding even though it's nagging at you. So you're saying, uh, say a thought came in, not paying attention, I'm choosing to move on. Thought is still there, still bothering you. Nope, still choosing to move on. I'm doing this and this and this. And you're keeping yourself busy, you're keeping yourself occupied, and you're trying your best not to get into um, analyzing and not to get into physical compulsions if your um, OCD is uh, more physical than uh, puro. And you're going like this all day. To the, again, to the best of your ability, we're not trying to achieve perfection. We're just trying to do the best we can. And you will start to see. If you want to take it up a notch, what I suggest you do is um, to do on-purpose exposures as well. So say, for example, um, if you are, um, what would be a common one? Uh, so say, for example, you have harm OCD and you're afraid of uh, what if you uh, kill all the members of your family. So when these thoughts come in, you're disregarding. But now on top of that, on purpose, you're sitting next to a knife doing all of those kinds of things, you know, on purpose. So as an addition to it, just it will recover you faster. If you want to take another notch, like in the specific situation, then uh, watch uh, some YouTube videos about some, uh, uh, you know, people that have or like whatever it's news stuff that's uh, whoever killed whoever. I would say uh, for the uh, watching, I would suggest though not watching a long documentary on one specific person because the trigger for, from that would be too intense for you. Um, and they really go into detail of the person's psyche and it will give you all kinds of triggers. It's just too much. But just a kind of brief news uh, item 
would would probably be enough for you to handle so something like that you know the more you push yourself um the faster you recover but at the same time pushing yourself and then you know falling down is not good so when you push yourself be certain that you will do response prevention if you feel that I'm starting to lose my power for the day. I don't know if I can do the response prevention. And then kind of just leave it for the day. Unless you are faced with kind of accidental triggers, then you do have to step up. But don't push it with extra triggers if you know if you feel already tired, if you feel like you've already done it enough um, today. That's okay as well. But every day, doing the best you can. And the brain will shut itself down when it comes to these thoughts. You don't need to do anything. Don't worry about how much they're coming in. Because at first, as soon as you start to do recovery work, at first the brain actually sends you more thoughts. Because the brain is kind of like, oh, what, you're not reacting to this trigger? I was trying so hard to protect you, and now you're not reacting at all? Okay, I got to send you a million more to make sure you're getting back into reacting. And that's it's programmed this way to keep you safe. It just doesn't understand that you are afraid of a, a red balloon and that you don't need to be kept safe from it. So, but it doesn't get it. And that's why, that's why the whole OCD issue. So that's, this is how we reprogram the brain. I hope you find my videos helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I do daily videos about all things related to OCD recovery. If you would like to do one-on-one -on -one recovery program, with me, all the information is on youhaveocd.com. You can sign up from there. If you do sign up, please book uh, all of your appointments or as many as you can, um, just so we have the, the space available for you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.